You're running up here like this, and you're not running full speed, you got something left, you see a crack, burst, go through it. Don't mess around, don't look for big things. The guy that's an old friend of mine that happens to be dead now, uh, his name is Andy McDonnell, he coached at Michigan State. And I worked with him in Seattle the first time I was there. And, and he, he always told the ball carriers, think of first downs, not touchdowns. Make, make first downs first, don't make touchdowns. Think of first downs, not touchdowns. Okay. So, you know, simply decide there's a, there's a crack, there's a soft spot, boom, run through it. Okay, uh, okay, slow down. You're running under control anyway. Let the defenders, okay, you guys are all ball kickers coming toward me, and I'm locked on to somebody and like this, and you got me moving, just, and I might be on your path. Well, let just kind of slow down, let me cross your path and go straight ahead. Okay, so just kind of slow down and let's go. And this, this isn't shit that... I promise you, Christian Okoye can learn this, and I, not because he's not smart, but he never picked, he didn't even know what a football was until he was about 20, 18 or 19 years old. Maybe he was from Africa. And Christian took on to this stuff, and he just did it right by the letter of the law, and he just, all this stuff, patience to it, patience, hesitating, and he wasn't just a guy that ran over people, although he could make your head flat if you tried to talk to him, but okay, so hesitate. Or uh, uh, slow down and then let the, let the defender drift past it. The other thing is a jump cut. Now, again, Christian Okoye weighs 260 pounds. He can do a jump cut. Anybody can do a jump cut, can do a jump cut. Because all it is is hesitating. It is a little different than slowing down to let the thing drift. There's a guy that's penetrating like this, and you just jump sideways, let the guy drift, and run straight ahead. It isn't jump sideways and then cut back. Okay? Unlike Again, a different concept that was talked about here. We don't look for cutbacks. We look for no cut. Let the defenders go and run straight ahead. Sometimes we cut back, but it isn't, it isn't a, we, we, they get their ass chewed out if we do that. Because avoid curling back, that's cutting back. Avoid curling back because what you're going to do is screw the offside guys. Because if you're, if you're an option running team like Seattle, I'm a defender. If the head goes that way, I'm playing behind it. Because I'm waiting for that guy to cut back. Well, if the ball carrier cuts back, I drop him and I go, boom, and stone the ball carrier. Okay? However, if you make me cross that guy's face, or start to cross the face, and then I drift and I go here, I this is that. Okay? So that's the, that's the idea of that. Alignment of the back. Can everybody do I need to move this up? Somebody shake your head. Yes. Okay. All right, the alignment of the back. How deep do you line your back up? I don't know. How big, how big a stride does he have? We got two different backs. One is, uh, is a long strider, the other guy's got not the biggest stride. So one guy lines up at seven yards, the other guy lines up at about six. It's all timing to the hole. I can tell you this, right, Wiles? If you got a stunting team, back your back up. It works. Okay? You're going to play a team, a, a bear team, and they're starting all over the place. Just deepen your back. Everybody do the same thing. Just deepen your back up a little bit. How do we know that? Well, I don't have to give you the specific reference, but Joe Pendry and I worked together in Cleveland, uh, and, and we used to play Jerry Glanville, and he had that stunt and shit. We used to just rip him and tear him a new asshole, because we couldn't figure out how to block that thing. So we decided we'd move the back back and let it just take a little bit more time, that much longer, and he saw it, and here we go, and that's just a little clue. Okay, so deep in this is done. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna tell you the rules, okay? Uh, will you do me a fit? Since I have, I never wear a watch, I, and when I get up here and start talking and all that stuff, you see, I, well, I say, you know, I, I get bullshit and I don't know where I am, so, so give me a, uh, you know, you gotta keep me honest here, right? It's about time. Okay, now here are the rules. An hour and a half. I have another hour and a half? <laughs> oh shit, I can talk about the drop step for an hour and a half. Or, <laughs> you uh, whatever. Uh, okay, there's three different ways we run the inside zone. Okay, you run the inside zone to the tight end. Okay, well there's really four, but fourth when I didn't have enough room on the page, so I didn't write it down. I didn't. I, I, you, know that, you know that cartoon that says where you plan ahead and you run a, well, uh, okay, uh, one is to the tight inside. 
with no, was not a, without a lead block, without a lead back. Another one is to the tight end side with a lead back, and then the other one is to the open side one back, where you've got a slot over there where you put a trips on one side and run that. If we could run it, if I could run that play every snap of the game, if you let me run it, we're going to run that play to the open side. <coughs> And we don't give a shit if a whole bunch of guys get over there and line up or stunt over there. Uh, we played this team named Jacksonville. We had a lot of fun with that play. <laughs> and uh, because they were stunting and shitting and going, and it was kind of up our alley because we didn't have to. If they were stunting, and we could catch somebody on an angle and boom, and distort the shit out of them. And when I talk about distortion, by the way, uh, I forget about my logic or you know the sequence of all this stuff, but when I talked about distortion before, I'm talking about distortion can come in two ways. It can come vertically or it can come horizontally. Okay? Vertical distortion is what Mike was talking about, the drive block. You knocked the piss out of the guy and you knocked him back. You distorted the defense. There's a whole, there's a soft spot. The other form of distortion is the guy is lateral distortion. That's why the ball carrier has to keep stretching and move the defender. Okay? So as time goes on from the time the play starts until the play, until the ball carrier crosses the line of scrimmage, if that's a nose man and I'm the end playing next to the right tackle, that's how far we are when we started, how far apart we are. If I'm doing this and I'm getting pushed just a little bit, but mostly lateral, and that guy after a while, he gets moved like this, and I kind of get there's more room than when we started. That's distortion. Right? That's, so there's two forms, this way, that way. It's nice if you can knock the piss out of somebody and knock him back. Most of the blocks that all of us coach, I suppose, unless you've got a real gorilla, um, most of the blocks we coach are stalemates. So we're always living with stalemates. So we don't get a lot of vertical distortion until the ball carrier gets the, the down lineman moving, and then we, what Mike was talking about, finish. Finish. Hard thing to teach, finish. I spend more time coaching finish than I do initial contact, probably. Feet. Get you guys in the Hands and feet. Hands and feet, hands and feet. Okay, the inside zone to the tight end side. Goes like this. The, uh, the tight end is captain of the ship. He gets the right away. To, he has, we, in, our, in our scheme of things, uh, we, don't count, uh, we don't count piss hands. Those are def defensive backs. Unless they are inside the front. If the, if the piss hand is outside, then the, he belongs to the wide receiver on that side, the nearest wide receiver. So we only count front type people, linebackers and defensive ends, Okay, so, but the tight end has number three. He's the guy that starts it. So if there's a guy standing halfway between here and here, and it's a linebacker kind of walked off, that belongs to that guy, okay? Or somebody in the front. Unless there's some special game plan uh, where we said, okay, you got this guy, or there's some signal from this guy to this guy that says, I got him. Okay, when this guy gets out here closer to him than him, then him got him and him stays where him is. So it goes, it's that simple. And so he's got the most dangerous man, man over, or it could be a linebacker that's farting around out here that has walked out, okay, because this could be a running back, okay? So he has number three, he has number two, he has number one, and he has number zero. Number zero could be lined up over the right guard, okay? So when the tight end has to call upon, has to leave a man, okay, how did I do this? Okay, I'm the tight end now coming at you. And that, that, that thing right there is the, that projector there is, the, is a linebacker. It might be an end, but I'm leaving the guy, I'm, come on, let's go. I got some call, it's a, come on, let's go. We gotta go. And I'm telling this guy next to me that I gotta go get him and you gotta come get this guy. Now we might cooperate, but I'm telling them there's a guy out here. It's real easy, it's not real hard, we call out. <laughs> so, you stole, god damn it, they stole one of my calls, Jesus Christ. <laughs> you know one of the best things, I'm gonna stop right now, as far as assignments are concerned, one of the, one of the most important things that I think is 
to, to, for me, for my guys, is knowing who we block. I don't give a shit whether they know that we're going to block them. So, if you, you know what punt protection looks like? Like this? You might see my guys doing just exactly that. I got him. We do a lot of jersey number stuff. Lots of it. Tight end says, oh, 54. <laughs> there we go. There's 54 standing right there. So, I mean, please, don't give the defense too much credit. <laughs> don't. Don't. Because it messes you up. Okay. So, he's got number three, he's got number two, he's got one, he's got zero, he's captain of the ship. Now, from the inside out, you know, the, the center doesn't wait for the tight, the, 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 the tight end to say, well, who he's going to get. He's, the, the, the center's going to block the man over. The right guard's going to block the man over. The tackle's going to block the man over unless somebody tells him to do something different. Or, if there's no one there, okay, if there's no one there, then reach to, to it. Go to it. Now, look at the next thing that has big red letters on it, okay? Write it down because it's real important to this play. Two on one is better than none on one. Okay? And I know that's pretty simplistic, but if, if you sit in our offensive meetings at our place, yeah, I know, yeah, 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 I know. The head coach, yeah, 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 I know. Two on one is better than none on one because they want to change the scheme. Well, God, we got three guys over here. You can put three guys over here and send the center back. And, you know, now that guy moves a little bit. And now what do you do? And so it's real simple. You don't have anybody to go, go to it. And if we end up with, for instance, if it looked like a, uh, looks like a, let's say it looked like this. And it was a back to back there. Okay, three and three. Why not send one guy back? Bullshit. I want to distort the defense. So the center and the right guard are going to go slip for that onside guy. The tight end and tackle are going to say triple for the same guy. We got four on three. It's a good deal. On the offside, we got two on two, and then we figure out, forget that guy, we'll figure out some other way to get that guy. But it directs everybody, and it makes everything simple when you don't have anything to do, go to it, period. End of discussion. If you don't have anybody in front of you, go double team and pound the piss out of somebody to the point of attack. Distort the defense. Okay, that's the inside zone to the tight end. Inside zone to the tight end with the lead blocker. Okay, oh, excuse me. Here, excuse me, up here we count it outside in. Okay, <coughs> count outside in. The next defense, you count inside out. Okay, because we don't have to worry about who number four is because the lead black, lead, lead blocker, lead back has got him. So tight end, block the man over you. Don't worry about that shit out there, tight end. I mean, this is probably the most complicated thing we, I do. Is tight end, or whoever it is, might be tackle. Don't, this is a lead back concept, we call it. Slant lead. <laughs> okay? I know that. But I'd be damned if we call slant, that means we all have to go and tight end has three, two, two, two. Now if I call slant lead, we don't need to go out there. Just block the man over you. Baldy. <laughs> Jim coached a guy named Richard Baldinger. Who else coached him in here? Marty. Sorry. Huh? Marty too. Marty coached him. <coughs> might be the smartest son of a bitch. Might be smarter than everybody in this room. All together. And, uh, but he was always trying to figure out what the other guy, Paulie, just shut the fuck up and just block the guy over you. you know? Is that, did that happen or not? I mean, and did you love him? Oh, man. He only played about 12 years. Yeah, yeah the snot just comes, big old bubble out of his nose and, oh. Okay, so, uh, number four, and everybody else block man over, cooperate, block, slip, scoop, blah, 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 blah. Okay, if we get two on one, it probably says it again, no, I only said it once, two on one is better than on one. Go pound the piss out of somebody, get four on three. Now, if you know, like that other diagram where I said the tight end and tackle are working on the end and the backer, and the center and the guard are working on the tackle and the backer, 
Well, I don't have to, if I'm the, if I'm the guard, I don't have to jump off that guy real fast because if he's falling like hell, because I know the tackle's going to get him. Okay? So, distortion. Okay? Uh, one thing I forgot, boys, but I'll get it. One of the most important parts of the play is what the quarterback does, besides hand it off. Okay? He hands it off, there's a big red circle there that says, naked. Naked means you come back the other way because it pulls people off. I don't have the tape any, I don't know, it's somewhere. Wait. I think, in fact, I remember in the Jacksonville uh, uh, Buffalo playoff, where you, where you guys, where you guys got two tight ends and ran the shit out of it, right? Boop, boop, boop. We kind of did some of that, you know, and Bang just pounded on them and just, you just wore them out. But I can remember seeing in the, in the, uh, the television replay, you know, a Bruce Smith, let's say, coming across like this, and the quarterback spun out of there. Well, that little shit that's got that, or he ain't little, but Brunel, when he's got that ball, he's pretty dangerous. So here's Bruce Smith going like this, and the ball carrier's running, shoo, just like that. Okay? So the naked is a, is your counter, it's the real important part of this play is to run the naked off that thing and the quarterback has to naked it, not when he chooses to or not when you get on his ass, but every time, okay? So if you're gonna take this concept of do a few things and do it extraordinarily well, everybody has to do everything all the time, not just part of the time, okay? That includes the quarterback. All right. <clears throat> Uh, now, the inside zone to the tight, to the open side, my favorite play, okay? Now, we sometimes will even toss it. Does it block differently? No, it's blocked exactly the same way. I don't do anything different. Maybe you stick your head a little wider, your angle of departure's about that much wider than it would if you'd have handed it off. Everything is exactly the same. Okay, so we go do the inside zone to the, uh, to the open side. Now the line, now if it's a slot, the widest, or the inside wide receiver has most dangerous range, bang, bang. Okay, now they'll walk a backer, in our deal, they, if, it's four, if it's a 4-3, they'll walk a backer out and play cover two. And, please, I'm ready for it. Okay, so the backer walks out about halfway or something like that, we give that guy to him, okay? This guy here, blocks the most dangerous front man from the outside in, okay? So he counts two, he counts one, he counts zero. There's a lot of reaching. There's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, like that even defense that I showed you up here, this one here, given a choice without this, this, this fella in here. In Missouri, they call him fella, don't they? My, my, my father-in-law calls him fella. We get, okay, we, we have, I had that look like that running to the weak side every time because, well, I got a blocker on that backside guy. They're out there in space, and that ball's going to go screaming up through there, and it's going to be pretty good. Okay, so this guy would have one, I mean, uh, he'd have two, one, zero, and zero's right there. Okay, so, and you, you apply the same, uh, you apply the same thing that you count from the, uh, again, you count from the outside in here. Okay. Outside in. Hey Mike, uh, spit's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Just a wonderful spit. That's great when you got one of these things. Okay, so you count outside in, two, one, zero, boop, boop. Okay, the, the line that you block the man over, not there, you reach, same deal as up there. We're pissing the same. Uh, see, I, I believe in go piss in the same place like a dog. And like Mike, who talked about fundamentals, but do the same fundamentals over and over and over and over again. Pretty soon you get a pass somewhere, and it looks, it looks you know, funny. And, I mean, it looks kind of vaguely routine. I mean, uh, uh, uniform. Okay, the tackle has a right away. Now, the real critical part of this thing is the quarterback. If your quarterback can count to four, you can run this play. If he can't count to four, you can't run this play. Okay, not three, but four. Okay, now, and here's what it, quarterback counts to four. If the center has to block number four from the outside in, if the, if the center's even part of him, I'm not talking about an escape scoop deal, 
If that number four is on the center at all, you cannot run the play. Period. End of discussion. Go run something else. Throw it or run the other way. Or run slam. Uh, you know, to the tight end side. Uh, so, I'll show you. You got all this. So, if, uh, uh, here's the, here's, I'm going to run it to the right here. Uh, so, I already showed you this one. It looks something, I don't care who's over here. It don't make any difference. They could even have a guy there and a guy there. And it looks like that. We just do a, a three-man deal, and we'll get those guys <coughs> over here. Would look like this: one, two, three, four. Center don't have to block him. Okay, we get to run it. Period. It's end of discussion. Don't worry about how we're going to get him on the back side because we're going to run it. Now watch this one. This is the one that gets us in our lead, where the quarterback looks up and says, "Well, God, that that left guard can get that guy." And, so on, so on. It looks like this. It's an under defense. This guy's offset like this. Middle linebackers, oh, excuse me, in fact, in a one back set. I told you split this one. That guy looks like that. Looks like this. All right? Now, it looks just like that. And the quarterback looks up and he says, God, we're just kind of run over here. Like, it looks a little bit like this one up here. If you only count to three, if you only count to three, this one and this one look exactly the same. Pretty close. Okay? If you count to four, this guy's on the center shoulder. Don't run it. Because if you if you run this play here, the way down here, this guy here has to block him. It don't work. This guy's in a perfect position. He has to over block that one. He's got to come over here and work with this guy to get to that guy. Now, okay? <laughs> it don't work. Number four is on the center. Don't run it. Now, it, what you have to do, uh, we, you have to be prepared for the, the, the line has to count. Now, if the, center, the quarterback doesn't get out of it, he's got, he's got two, okay? He's got one, he's got one, and there's another one there. He has, we've got a call. It's an overloaded kind of call that we make. To the right, we got one got an R in it, and that one with an L in it that goes to the left. So, so uh, actually, it's not. When we go to the right, it's called high, and we go to the, low, the left, it's low. So it's it's the top. So, so. so if we had to, we got into this thing. That, you know, center say high because he comes over here and attack and says high, and because I got too many guys, and we got to go over and block them. The quarterback fucked it up. Okay. Well. Probably will continue to happen as long as I have a hole in my head. Okay, now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you. Uh, I'm going to show you the play, and then we're going to come back and we're going to talk about the stuff that Mike was touching on, uh, slips and scoops and cooperations, and and I got a whole other set of shit here for you. So yeah, am I talking about now? What's that? Oh, okay. They only got one body. Yeah, I see when you were talking earlier this morning. That's up. Okay. Scott, turn the volume down. Put the volume. Does this he, work? He's, he'll get it. There you go. <laughs> Okay, some of this stuff, some of it looks good, some of it doesn't look good. You know, when you make a, when you make a drill, like that's pretty good. Now, can you hear me all right back there now? Okay, when you, uh, when you, uh, when you do these plays, you can only pick out the good ones, so you ready to get set, go. Okay, this is to the open side. To the open side. I'll show you the theory of the play. If I have to, I'll come back and show you the same thing. Now, we're going to run it here to the right. Oh, shoot. Do we have a pause guy? In? Oh, there it is. We got it. I'm going to show you this. All right. 
bubble over here. You know, it's obvious. It looks obvious to me that this end is real wide. But we got this thing from the end zone, and then uh, this guy's going to run through the gap. And and I'll talk about a guy being in that in that heavy three position with the, with the, the center's got an offset nose, man. Uh, by the way. Probably one of the smartest things we ever did in Seattle was let, uh, was let uh, Ray Donaldson go. I'm being real facetious. I was real pissed when we did that. Uh, since he went to the Pro Bowl last year. Anyway, we got an offset nose, man. We're scooping. All right, so now you know. Zip, zip, zip. But what I want to show you from this angle here is this is the jump cut. Okay, I don't know how to slow mo it. There it is. Okay, jump sideways. Just hip. Now keep going straight. Okay? To sort the defense. Good. Now the rest of it, that's talent and all that stuff. And I, I'm not saying the other stuff isn't talent, believe me. Okay, now, everybody ought to have their head outside. And when this guy started coming into the gap, Hitch should have stuck his head outside, did he? I mean, he got scared with the junior sales. But here's how it got to get your head to the outside. And we're going to talk about that's That's outside of the... And we're going to talk about the middle of the cylinder here in a minute. And so, but it's all, what we're trying to do is distort. Okay, so he's going to block, everybody's going to block on the angle you find him on. This is kind of a rip deal. Okay, so he's going to, he's taking a drop step, ripping, arching back, ass, that's kind of a half-assed ass block. The ass, the, yeah, it is, there's an ass block. The ass block was invented by a guy that lives in, in Cincinnati. It was. Tiger Johnson. Okay, so that's one of them. Okay, now here's another one with a different front. Now we've got an even deal here. Whoops, okay. So these two guys have got to go get those two guys. Now we're going to try to scoop on the backside. We don't get that done because the guard takes off on the tackle. The tackle doesn't get himself turned quite right. Stuff like that, but it's it works all right. I'll show you this one from the end zone. Okay, this guy walks up in the gap here, but what Donaldson's going to do is he's going to still come to this guy here because he knows that he's probably bluffing. He's probably got some body language, figuring that guy ain't going to come. He's going to back out, so he stays on this thing on the horse over here. So we just kind of distort it sideways. That's a little bit of a cut, I guess, but in theory, it's the no cut you know, deal, no cut, I mean, okay, now we're going to go to the tight end side. Uh, the very first one of these, and uh, Wiles was talking about the slant, the pinch inside and all that kind of stuff, and you're going to see the end pinch inside, and we're still going to run inside of them, because it's not what the end does with your eyes, it's what the end does when you get to the point of decision. So the guy, this guy's going to pinch inside this, this uh, this right guard here, and we're still going to run inside. It's kind of a neat thing that uh, uh, doesn't, hopefully we're not trying to do it. Uh, Howard Ballard does a pretty good job of still staying on that thing, you know, and they, but we still end up running inside. If, the, if you were running in the purest form, the back is supposed to go up here somewhere. Well, shit, wait till you get to the heels, as Mike said, wait till you get to the heels of the defender, to the offenders, okay, and just wait. And all you're doing is waiting, waiting. You know, we made a little jump cut there, and now it's, hello. That was a fun day, we got, about, we got a whole bunch of yards that day. Okay, so, this is called, these are the guys that, that are trying to run the sideline. Oops, God damn it. I don't know what buttons for Okay, so, run to the sideline. See how this guy's pinching? Let's focus on that a little bit. So the ball carrier just waits till he gets to the heels of the defender. Now you'll see House Ballard here, he turns this guy into the point of attack, so to speak. But when he gets to the point of, he gets to that point right there, when he comes off this thing, he's blocking the outside of the middle of the cylinder of the man as it relates to the ball carrier, where the ball carrier is now. Okay? So uh, just focus on that the term middle of the cylinder. The, if you could think of this guy being a cylinder and the ball, car ball carry having a meat cleaver, he'd chop him in half and half fall on one side, half on the other. That's what we deal with is middle of the cylinder. We don't deal with numbers and, and so on. We deal with the middle of the cylinder. It may relate to a shoulder or something like that, but Howard Ballard is actually blocked, has got the, the outside 
on two inches that Mike was talking about, an inch or two inches on the outside of the middle of the cylinder of the guy, and all he's doing is flatten him out and he's going to the sideline. Um, you know, the center's uh, got his head over there. Just get your head over there and start running. Don't stop the turning. Okay? Pretty good job on the backside. Uh, not bad. Pretty good shoulder rip there. Make, it, make the shoulder give. That's a pretty good deal. Didn't, he didn't do, a good, didn't do a real good job at this part. So the ball through your head to go back in there and then that part doesn't turn pretty. Now, this is a, now that's, that guy was a pretty talented guy. Okay? Now this guy here is Steve Smith, who's about as, he can run about as fast as I can. I got an artificial knee. So, but Steve, all he is is patient. See his little feet chattering in there? Do, 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 do. Steve would kill me if I said that about him. I love him. He's a wonderful guy. But all he's doing is chattering his feet. Now you're going to see something happen to this linebacker right here when we get to the end zone. But from the sideline, you can see him just chatter his feet, slow himself down, wait, be patient, let the thing happen, and then find it and burst. Okay? It's not speed to the hole, it's speed through it. Okay, so from the end zone of this, we're going to show you how. He's supposed to stick his head on the outside of this guy. He's going to work a, a, a combination block. It looks to me, we're all standing here, it looks to me like this thing is kind of made for you, but you still have to stick your hand up to protect in case they, you know, screws you a little bit. But it's pretty well made for you. You know, get knowledge before the ball's done. So you stick his hand up, he's supposed to do that. Makes me feel better that he did that. Uh, Okay, and what he's got to do is get his head play side. Just keep blocking him on the angle you find him on. He stopped the turning a little bit. Okay, now, where's the, where's the, oh, where's the, oh, there it is. I don't know what I did. I did something like I'm trying to slow him on. Okay, he's got his head on the outside. Don't worry about it. Let the ball carrier move the defender for you. Okay, fit and finish. You know, these things that, uh, you know, Mike's talking about get you to you extend. Know, push the man, as I say, a little differently. Maybe the same type of thing. Push the defender away from you and run block and push yourself away from him and pass block. So push the defender away from you, okay? Keep your feet wide and just keep driving your feet. Just keep driving. Block him on the angle. So far, we haven't knocked him back yet, except we've distorted the shit out of him. Okay, get your head on the outside. Be patient. Wait for the, wait for the linebacker to come to you, all right? Get your head outside. Now watch what this linebacker does. He's got his head in there. He's got to disengage. And Steve chattering his feet right there, and he goes, oh, I better get back over here. Yeah. He says, whoops, hello. I mean, it's classic to me. It's classic of, of, uh, of I don't know, I did something wrong here. How do you get it to go? Come on, get going right here. Okay, there you go. <coughs> so, uh, a different ball here. And look how close this guy is. Uh, now, he, Steve is, uh, is like five and a half yards. Okay, a much slower guy. I think this was the last one, so I'll go back to the one prior to this. Uh, now, see, this is a long striding guy. I don't know, damn, he's ten or eight year, yards deep. Uh, it all has to do with timing. When you can get the line of scrimmage, how patient you are, all that kind of stuff. So, uh, I don't know if that's. Yep. Now, you push it too much. Oh, hang on just a minute. But that's all right. I'm gonna, I, you go ahead and turn the lights on because I'm going to rewind it to a point. Okay, now. Some of the shit you guys can say if you up here wouldn't be funny either, so. <laughs> Specs are pretty funny guys, so. You guys will have delightful food by then. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do is, uh, well, I think well, I'll be awake and all that. Uh, now, I got notes upon notes up the ass here so that uh, and I can uh, 
Okay, so uh, some more stuff. Uh, these are all written things that uh, basically what I'm going to do is talk. How am I doing time on? Okay, so, about another 50 minutes. Good deal. We can get through this shit. Uh, okay. Here's the. Gotta keep my two things straight here. you need to do when you're the blocker, okay? I, I went into, uh, I don't do a lot here with, uh, with the ball carrier. I did all of that with the, 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 in the prior little thing. Now what I'm going to talk about is, is uh, what, the, what the blocker, the individual guy is thinking about, where he's his head, blah, 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 all that kind of stuff, the technique of, of cooperation blocks, uh, zone blocking, if you will. Okay, now, the, really it's important to know two kinds of leverage in this, kind of, in this kind of a play. You have to leverage the point of attack. That means stick your head where it belongs. And don't stick it three inches where it don't belong. Don't stick your head inside when it's supposed to be outside. Don't stick your head inside I'm blocking that chair. Don't stick your head inside and try to get your head outside. It don't work. Put your hat where it belongs. Okay? Now, the reason why you're doing that is because, remember I started out when I did this, I said we're all headed in the same direction. I got a picture where guard is running back, the quarterback, the left guard. Is, no, everybody's going, everyone looks like they're headed in the same place. Well, that's because we are. Point of attack right over there. Okay, so, if I'm going to block a guy, this guy, wherever, I don't know what I am, but the point is actually over that orange thing there somewhere, between the, me and the, somewhere over here a couple yards. If I got to block this guy here, I want to intercept his pursuit angle with my head. Okay? I guess we can all figure that out. If I keep shooting missiles, you want to make sure, and what you want to be able to do, <coughs> somewhere in this thing I've got it, I don't know where the hell it is. I want to be able to cross the, oh, I know, I got it in the car. I want to be able to cross the T on him. Okay, so that when you got, I'm stronger going forward when you're going sideways and I can knock you sideways and I can distort you. I guess we understand the crossing the T. If you don't, then see me later and we'll explain crossing the T. But, anyway, so I, I gotta get my head between that guy wants to run over there, and I want to run over there, and the is going over there, so I want to get my head in front of him. That's so leverage the point of attack. Alright? Now leveraging the man happens to be all of the fundamentals that you've already been taught that we've talked about. It's footwork, it's uh, shoulder plane, it's knee bends, it's hands, it's your forearm, it might be your hands. Uh, I already said that. I don't know what else to say. Uh, that's it. Okay. Ah, it might be his feet. Well, I got that coming up a little bit later. Okay. Now, and then this whole thing is to distort this thing. Remember, I keep talking about distortion. I kind of wear words out. I get a little concept here, and I wear them out. So if you fell asleep with volleyball and you come back, you get it the second time. Uh, okay. So uh, anyway. And Mike touched on this thing, finish, 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 feet, feet and hands, feet and hands, feet and hands, keep your head up, push him away from you, feet and hands, feet and hands, wear him out, okay, and okay. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit something here a little bit later, okay, now the middle of the cylinder is really important to be able to leverage the, the, the point of attack, that diagram. We'll come back to this, uh, this outline. Middle of the cylinder, I kind of talked about it and showed it to you. I think you understand that. So if you're the, doing pass protection, I talk about the middle of the cylinder. Okay? Talk about the middle of the cylinder and his feet. Remember I told you at the beginning, try to make, try to get something out of this, all of us. Dump it in your brain, process it, and let it come back and be your own. Try to 
project yourself on the field with your hand on the ground and figure out what it, imagine what it looks like. Try to do that. Not just, well, you like that guy, you like that guy, you do this, you do that. Put yourself in their place. I don't say, I'm not saying being sympathetic, okay, or, or anything like that, or let them off the hook, but be realistic, okay? So, this middle of the cylinder concept, I tried to figure out, okay, now I'm seeing the buck here, the boom here, the game one. All right, so in the middle of the cylinder, as it relates to the zone play, where the ball is being exchanged, okay, and where that defender is determines the middle of the cylinder. Meat clip, and it chop him in half, and I can now determine where the middle of the cylinder is. I know the buck here is going to find the right tackle, and where the guy is, and I know where the middle of the cylinder is. I can also, in my stands, you can see his hand and his feet. Okay? You can see his hand and his feet. And if you think all players are going to play like this, they're not. Mind though, I didn't. I mean, all I could see was a hand and two feet. That's all I could see. I might be able to see the... I might be able to see the feet of the middle linebacker through the feet of the defensive tackle. I might have been able to see, you know, a little bit over there. But I had to change my stance and look around. If I, I kind of knew if I was going to pull and I needed a block out there and I had to kick that, that, that outside linebacker out, I knew where he was. I could see him. I could see his feet, but that's about it now. I'm done. Okay, my head's down. I, you know, I can see his feet and his hands. Okay? Now, so a little sooner we understand that. And I don't know how where this is in the outline, so I'm going to tell you now. When I think of things, I'll tell you. It's a little, uh, okay, so here are his feet. There's one, there's one feet, and there's the other feet. He's got an inside hand out. Okay, what I'm going to do with my feet is I'm going to step on the outside. I'm going to take the big, my big toe. I'm going to take the, the, uh, the bunion of my big toe. And I'm going to step on the corn of his little toe. And I'm going to take the corn of my little toe and I'm going to step on his big toe. That's my angle of departure out of my stance. I can see that. So if I had clown shoes on, I could step on that. And that's going to determine the angle of my shoulders in order to block that guy. And I don't give a shit whether you lead step, drop step, you do a double back, back flip. If that son of a bitch is there, and the back, and the back, the back is his shoulders are going to be about like that when he gets the ball. And I want my shoulders to be the same way. Somehow, and I'm going to in the middle of the cylinder. See, whoop, whoop, there his feet. Well, that gives you a general idea. Okay, I'm going to step. Somehow, I'm going to step like that. My head's now, and I get real specific. I say, take the inside nostril and put it on the outside of the middle of the cylinder. Or excuse me, take the, take your inside nostril and put it on the middle of the cylinder. Now, if that's an in, some people's noses are wider than others. Some, sometimes you miscalculate, but.